Greetings! It is I, Tantus Narathon Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome! It is time to continue my discussion on Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, the second edition of AD&D. Well, where we last left off, we've been diving into magic items and creating them as you as a player. Now, granted, we're going over information from the Dungeon Master's Guide, but it might be something that your players, or you as a player, want to do. What if you're a priest or a cleric and want to make one? You can too. So it will require you to, of course, find an appropriate material that you're going to use. Once you find this extraordinary material that you're using for the base of your item, then it's a process. First off, you have to basically purify and meditate for two weeks. Then you have to fast and meditate for one week. After this point in time, you've prepared yourself in order to basically create this magic item. You have to take that material you have, and you have to purify it. This you're much more fortunate as, as purifying this item, this extraordinary item you had as the base of your, of your magic item, takes a day and a night. That's it. You're done with that. You've purified everything. You've prepared everything. You lay the object upon the altar, and you pray to your altar. Now here's the hard part. It's still a little easier than it was for the wizard, in a way, but it's still the hard part because... Every day that you pray to the altar, you have a 1% chance to successfully commune with your deity, cumulative, in order for that deity to basically grant you this magic item. Yeah. So, 1% cumulatively, so it could take you 100 days in order to make a magic item, if you get really unlucky. It could take you one. You don't know when you have prayed enough to your deity and shown enough faith in order for them to grant this magic item to you. Now, if it's a magic item that has charges of some kind, you are still required to take another step. Within 24 hours, you have to cast the spell that is going to be used as part of those charges into the magic item. If any point during this process, you fail, especially that last point there, you have to start over from scratch exactly from scratch yep so it might take you even more time once again now this is all assuming you're on good terms with your own faith if you haven't been the most faithful or you've been doing things that are against the tenets of your religion well your deity might not be so nice to you when they finally answer your prayers you could end up with a cursed item depending on the situation you are within your own doctrines and religion your DM will determine a percentage chance that you could get a cursed item. Again, if you're pretty strict to the faiths and have been good to it, you're not going to worry about that at all. But if you have been doing some, uh, well, shady things for the faith, you might have to worry about ending up as that. Now, as I said, there are items that require a charge. They basically use up charges and then they're done with. You are able to recharge these magic items. Put more charges into them. Now this is difficult to do, but it is much easier than making your own magic item once again. It will require you, if you are a wizard, to cast the enchant magic item spell, or if you are a priest, to properly pray at an altar to this item. And then you have to cast the spell that you're charging into it, into the item, taking the exact same amount of casting time that it would take to cast the spell, not the enchant item spell if you're using that one. That one, you're not using its casting time, you're using the spell's casting time to place it in there. There is a caveat, though. There's a danger in doing this. Once you attempt to do this, you have to make a saving throw versus spell with a minus one. If you succeed at this save, you've put the spell in there. If not, you've messed up in your attempts to put the spell into this magic item to recharge it. You've basically interfered with its own magical properties. Your item crumbles to dust. There you go. So there is this chance of failure that exists within attempting to recharge your magic item. But you still can. Now, there might be an opportunity or a time where you decide to destroy a magic item. It might be appropriate to whatever is going on. If you're thinking of destroying a magic item, they are more difficult to destroy than your common everyday item but they are not invulnerable. 
you could destroy it if you really need to or want to. It's not impossible. Now, if this magic item is in my own hands, I'm holding it, I can destroy it with no effort whatsoever. I could snap a blade, break a wand in half, snap a staff, uh, crush a ring, whatever it would be. I can do it and just destroy it without any problems. If it's under someone else's possession, now we're getting to be more difficult. It is difficult but not impossible to destroy a magic item under another creature's possession. It will require a vast number of stacks to be successful. You have to make an attack roll. The target gets a saving throw, and the item gets a saving throw. If you successfully hit, and the target fails to save, and the item fails to save, guess what? You've destroyed that magic item whoever it was was carrying. Now, the result of magic items traditionally result in some kind of magical discharge of energies. This oftentimes takes the place of small explosions or something else. Uh, some items will list what will happen to them once they're destroyed. You'd have to look at the item itself. But regardless, whatever effect should be generally described as slightly devastating and up to the DM themselves. Important thing to note, though, about this is whatever damage would be dealt by this explosion should not kill a player. The thing is, consider this. If I'm a guy with a magic sword and an enemy breaks my magic sword and it causes some kind of explosion, it's insult to injury to kill me with it. I'm already getting screwed over because my magic sword's getting broken. Why should it also kill me? So just used dramatic something or other that happens that seems appropriate. If the person that's losing the weapon is very injured, they shouldn't be killed by it. It should just be some kind of dramatic thing, maybe knocking them back, knocking them out, something like that that makes sense in the situation, because this is DM's discretion. Just make it seem very interesting, dramatic, cinematic kind of thing. Now there is another optional thing we can talk about. Artifacts and relics. Artifacts and relics are incredibly powerful magic items that are the purview of the Dungeon Master. What does this mean? This means that these items will never show up in a game unless a Dungeon Master decides it is appropriate to show up in the game. That is the only time you will ever see one of these powerful items. Its power needs to be controlled basically within the game, whether it's controlled by an enemy or a PC. And the control of it often comes with per repercussions to attempting to use these powerful things. So it will be that prerogative of the DM when this thing will be used and how appropriately be used. You're not going to just come across an artifact. This is something that's going to be planned out and inserted carefully into the game when it shows up. Now each artifact itself is unique. And traditionally, you're really only going to see one artifact per campaign. You could have a storyline where it makes sense about certain ones. There are certain sets of, magic, of artifacts that, when assembled, create something more powerful. These exist in the game world. Then you might have these to create the set. But traditionally, it's just going to be this one very powerful item that becomes one of the focal points of the campaign. It should be in the story very deeply ingrained and the effect of having this can be anything from a negative effect from just owning it or a stigma from things around you you might possess this and be the target of enemies so you can see there should be a drawback to it because of the nature of this item's power if a character transfers from another campaign you will never allow them to bring an artifact with them because artifacts are supposed to be so key to your campaign. You will let that person know ahead of time before they would decide to enter into the campaign. They should know. You should be like, okay, you have this artifact. You can't bring it with you, but you can use that character. You just have to be serious and let them know about that. Because, again, artifacts are such a key to the campaign itself, you don't want to unbalance that. Now, why all this concern about an artifact for a very simple reason artifacts are an excuse for a dm to break the rules there that's the reason behind it artifacts are so powerful 
they can either just have a very powerful effect or they can completely alter and break the rules. You can have an artifact that gives someone a 20 in a stat that maybe they had an 8 in it before. Guess what? Now you have a 20. You can see the difference of it. Or maybe I can create a meteor swarm, a ninth level spell, at will with this artifact. This is an incredible amount of power. And traditionally, either your DM is going to be using one or designing one that is appropriate to the campaign world you're in. That this power is appropriate there. But again, it's being used wisely because it is so powerful. But that's it for today. I, of course, finished up talking about the general basics of creating a magic item with priests making them. I talked about recharging magic items that have charges. I talked about destroying magic items, because it is possible, though oftentimes to dramatic results that may indeed injure you. Shouldn't kill you, but could injure you. And I finished up by introducing you to artifacts and relics. Something that's truly optional in your game world, that you as a DM can choose not to add in. But when you do, it has to be such an important focal point of your adventure. Granted, maybe your adventure isn't all about this artifact, but this artifact should factor into the storyline. It should still be important, even if it isn't the focal point. Maybe you need this artifact to help you defeat the great evil. Maybe this artifact was something the great evil was looking for. It could be any of a dozen ways of incorporating it that make it very important, but it isn't the focal point. Maybe this artifact was known for fighting the god of that great evil, and, you know, you didn't have to pick it up. But by picking it up, you're choosing to assist this deity in fighting against this evil that you've been battling against, who happens to worship the deity it hates. You can see here. Or it was built to fight against. You can see the nature of it. In the next episode, we are going to dive deeper into artifacts and relics and talk about them some more, some of the more rules about them, especially when we're talking about designing them a little bit too. So, but if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It's your support of the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon, link description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.